Special thanks to Corey Wilson. Just signed up for the Patreon. He will get be able to message me directly. He also will be able to see videos before they come out. Weeks, sometimes months before they come out. Also, we're at TB Uncut. We're almost up to 500 followers over there. On Rumble, you get 100% of the notifications. So if you don't know what Rumble.com is, that's where all the people are going for freedom of speech, where you cannot be blackballed for your beliefs and what you think and what you say. So make sure you sign up for that. Sometimes on YouTube, they don't really, you know, they don't really pay attention to the notification. You say, I missed a live. If you're tired of missing lives, go sign up for Rumble.com. It's TB Uncut. And if you want to help support the channel for more than just cash apps, you can hit the Patreon channel. And that Patreon channel, you get stuff first, you can message me directly, and you also can help support the channel. I appreciate everybody who signed up for the Patreon and the TV Uncut. I'm happy that you're here for the live. Let's get into it. I was rough around the edges. <laughs> I, I, I would say uh, when I first got into trucking and then start doing um, media, I was um, I was rough around the edges. I was naive. I, I I didn't I didn't oh, what's the perfect word I didn't really understand the gravity of my um of my platform I just thought I was doing the same thing everybody else was doing and, you know I I didn't understand how um how backstabby the situation I was mm. in. I had like no me. Life. And that whole thing with YouTube, bro, like, I had to learn a lot, man. Like, remember, like, I live out here, and I'm just doing my thing, man. And I'm used to talking to people, and what they say is what they do. And then I get on YouTube trying to share some information. And, uh, yeah, I was extremely unexperienced about the world of all that stuff. You know, people carrying bones with bullshit, you know. And you always take people's word that it's true, and then it turns out it's not the way it is. And now you're done. I caught up on friendships and shit on some bullshit, you know. But I think it's a maturity level on YouTube and experience on YouTube, you know, live and learn. Yeah, I mean, the truth is, you know, YouTube is high school. That's the part we didn't. We didn't. I know. I didn't even do. I didn't even do that in high school, though, bro. Like, you know, like. Yeah, well, most people high do. School is, high school yeah. is usually a bunch of kids acting like adults. Um working on their emotions but acting like they're not lying about who they are fake personas it's the i mean everything we've seen fake personas bullshit uh acting like they have money when nobody has a job and <laughs> no one has money there but everybody for some reason is calling other people poor but no one has a job it's, it's the same shit here if the average trucker is not balling out of control but every single trucker that gets on here usually acts like they're either balling out of control or they're some super guru businessman. And the truth is 90% of the time we know that we've seen, because me and you have been around for a skosh, you've been around longer than me. We've seen people go up and go down and go up and go down and go up and go down. And we realize that it's just a volatile business. You can't really, you know, you can't really get cocky because trucking will fix that. You can't act like well, you're the man too much because trucking will trip you up. One thing I've always told everybody is everything's relationships, right? So, I mean, going back in high school, you know, I learned that stuff in high school, right? If you speak on something, you got to stand out, stand on it always, you know? And I had to realize on YouTube that my role that out here is not other people's worlds that they live in other places, other states, whatever, and they get on YouTube. <clears throat> There's a lot that I had to understand. <clears throat> as far as trucking goes, to me, my outlook is trucking is what you make it, right? Everything's in relationships. And I remember when I hit when I hit the scene, I got made fun of because everybody said, oh, everybody's got trucking videos. Everybody knows how to have some tires. You know, everybody knows this, like, you know, Trucking is boring and all that stuff, but since I've been on my platform, I've done this, I've, I've spoke on the same thing and I've never changed. And I'm still here today doing exactly what I've been doing, you know? But the whole thing is it's relationships. Just like take trucking out of it, right? And you do other things in life. 
everybody knows relationships get you into the club better or, you know, get you anywhere faster. It's always about relationships and never burn bridges. That's number one. Never burn a bridge. Hmm. That's a that's a, <laughs> that's an interesting take on it. Okay. Um, I agree. I can't say I disagree. I agree. I don't do well with relationships. Um, it's something that I mean I probably do well with them now because, as you know, as you get older, your testosterone starts to level out. As you become older, you you're not as um you're not as aggressive. So I've I've learned patience. I know how to take time now. Before, if you know if something was out of line, I would just attack it. Like now, I'm just I'm not that interested in attacking every little thing. I I will say um as far as trucking goes and relationships, I just I just don't see many ways of building them. Like I, I don't I don't I don't have a way of telling. A um, a person, what relationships to build in trucking? Because I believe, unless you have your own authority, if you're dealing with the corporate side of trucking, they 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 purposely don't let you build any relationship. You would have to get to the point where you're the level of a SoCal for relationships to matter. If you're just going to a company and leasing, that shit don't fucking matter, bro. You're a number. You know, if you just Talk go about that. Mm -hmm. Real quick, let's talk about that, right? I helped a guy one time. He was a driver for a, for a big company, right? And he says, "Man, I really like this lane, but they take him off, take me off sometimes." I said, "Look, I said stand out beyond all the other drivers that show up." I said, "You know, dress decent, like you care about your job. Smile when you go in there. Carry a conversation so they remember who you are. You know, and, and start with that. And believe it or not, he started doing that." And that dedicated the day on, they called his boss and said, make sure you send that guy. And next thing you know, he established a relationship, not his customer, not his truck. Now he built a relationship. And what did that do? That, that helped him achieve what he wanted to achieve. Now he started running that dedicated every time. Yeah, like I said, if you're the right person, it works. I just got my experience with trucking. I got, I don't know where this person works or what state he's in or anything like that, but that's not my not experience. California. <laughs> well, there, there, there you go. I'm in America, so in America that shit don't work like that. No, he's in America, just not California. You said he's in California. No, he's not in California. He's oh. in the, the states. It was so long ago. I don't really remember what. Yeah, he's in, but, but like I said, it, 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 it. I might. It's not have been my experience, but also I have to caveat to the fact is um uh i have a youtube too and it's different when you have a youtube and a lot of these guys that are coming in are making youtubes i always try to tell them you know i don't want to discourage you from making a youtube but it doesn't help your trucking career to do it you have to understand that going into it that you're hurting yourself so you better figure out a way to um you're either gonna have to placate or you're gonna have to be a company guy on camera and we know the guys who are the company guys on camera but you get you know you can never criticize you can never have a thought it, it, to me if i if, if my, my child was about to do trucking i would tell him don't make a youtube it's not going to help your career it's not unless you're going to go to the ownership side unless you're just going to you know get all your own shit and do all that type of stuff but if you're if you're needing for someone to say yes you can work here then you don't you don't need to have a YouTube. Uh, that's one thing I didn't understand coming into it. I, I acted like my YouTube was separate from my career, and the truth is, it's not. It's not separate. The whole, thing, the whole thing about people in general is you wake up as a man, you go to sleep as a man. So anything you touch, anything that you do is you. No matter if it's YouTube, non YouTube, trucking, or, or flipping cars, or relationships with females, whatever it is you do is always going to be you. It's always everything's always attached together so i had to learn that myself too right but you know when people say oh it's just youtube like i never thought that like what i see on the screen is who you're supposed to be in person right you know and and, and we all learned right in our 
Now, I guess our maturity of YouTube, we learned that's not the case out here most of the time. Yeah, that was surprising. I, I really, I mean, I, I thought everybody, it shows, showed my naivete. I thought everybody was supposed to be real. That was a thing that I brought. Same, same with me, bro. Same yeah, with me, like, bro. Everybody ain't real, bro. People. Are sh- I never, I never knew what a troll was, you know. Right. And I mean, I never lived life like that. Like, you know, like out here, like it sounds stupid to say real life, but I'm saying non YouTube. Like, if people are not what you want, you don't fuck with them. Or excuse me, you don't mess with them. Yeah, you know? and that's just how that is, you know. And, um, and so anybody around me, they they're really about the business. So, and it's been so long since I've been around people that are full of crap that I didn't even notice it. You know, when I got on YouTube, you know, <laughs> like I thought everybody was real, bro. And then, Solid, yeah. Trolls carry bones, and you believe what they say. And next thing you know, you're mad at somebody for something they didn't even do. And right, one thing I want to say, man, is always carry a conversation you know because communication is everything relationships friendships everything and and that's where i felt you know when when i learned about trolls on youtube and carrying bones and all that stuff like the first thing i should have did was call that person up like bro check this out but my immaturity i'd get mad blow up explode react and one thing a lot of people learned on YouTube, some people still haven't, is if you're pissed off and mad, whatever, don't hit the record button. Oh Calm down, God. think about it, because it might it might not be what you think it is when you're mad. Yeah, don't respond. That that's that's the that is the the secret nuclear weapon to doing this. And if it, I want to know what I, another thing I did too is I do not, I am not a customer of YouTube. I don't sit around. And watch trucking YouTube. Because if you do, you don't know if one in the window is about you or not. Then you end up becoming that person who says, I think they're talking about me. Or I don't watch. I don't if watch. If you do trucking. that, next thing you know, your, your content starts leaning in that direction. Mm-hmm. It like, starts leaning and responding about? to that direction. So mm-hmm. now you're either, like I said, all of this shit is churches. I told a guy that says, I said, every channel is a church. And depending on what a person says in my comment, I know whose congregation he comes from. If you jump over here and say, if a dude has a payment, he's not owner op and everything has to be owned and buy all your trucks cash. I kind of know where you're coming from, who you're coming from. If you jump over here and say, no, I'd rather just stay lease. I know who you're coming from. No, I'd rather train. I know who you're coming from. I know who you're coming from because the commenters are just in betweeners. The truth is they watch everybody. But they have someone they like. So when they're watching your content, but they're really a disciple of this person, they'll start disagreeing with you along the lines that their person disagrees with you. And it, it creates issues. So I, I have developed a way of, I kind of remember what everybody usually says, and I know what angle of someone's coming from, and I can make some content out of it. But I know I, I start not taking it serious. Another thing I do, too, is I don't live nearby. I don't do that. I have an idea where you're at. Yeah, most people think they do. <laughs> most people think they do until they find out, <laughs> and they're like, "Holy shit!" Yeah, like there's no land. But the main, but the main thing, it doesn't matter where you're at. The main thing is, you know, you found yourself. You know, you found your lane, and you found out the life you want to live. You know, well, the person uh, you're next to, man, that's the most important thing, bro. Ground don't mean true. shit. That's true. That's true. But it's not true if you a nigga, because. When you switch to black people, they like to take shit off the internet, and then it becomes it becomes uh, it becomes dangerous. So I started realizing, like, okay, this is you know, this is I almost had to, to shoot a couple of people. Like I was like, this is getting weird. What the hell is going on? You know what I'm saying? So I started trying to figure out that it was a it was a level of troll that was only interested in trying to see me in person. And a few people almost got that fire about me because they think I'm just a soft target until they pull up on me and they're like, oh, no, it ain't like that, man. Like, you ain't got to be like that, bro. Like, hey, I'm sure you've heard that before in the West. Go, oh, man, yeah. you know, I really look up to you, man. That's really what it took. No, bro, I don't, I don't do the walking up on me. I don't do the finding out where I live. 
I don't do remembering my uh remembering my vehicles. I don't really play those type of games. I'm concealed carry. That's another thing too. Everybody should be concealed carry. I got mine. Oh, I know you got yours. Everybody should be concealed carry. You know, uh, vote for Trump. But all I'm saying is, if <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, real quick, speaking about that, bro. What I was gonna do, I was gonna put a Trump uh, flag and everything behind me, man. But I'm like, I, you know, I didn't get. I'm not against. gonna do that. You know. I'm I'm be real with you. I'm not against it because I know since I'm, you know, I'm not supposed to be for Trump, but I hate. To, I've tried to have a very objective view of of all the politics and and trucking politics, and it's just looking that way, man. I, I don't know what to tell y'all. Like that's just the way it's if, looking. So if, if you had a is, business mindset, right, what well, people don't understand, you don't gotta like like Trump as a person. He's praying. I ain't gonna cousin him, but he's probably a jerk. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, he's yeah. probably not the guy you you would like in person. But being said, it doesn't mean we don't like his, you know, the way he runs the country in business where he puts money in our pocket. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's one of those things where don't vote against your own interest. It's just, it, it ends up being that type of conversation. But what I've learned in time is that I prefer to say my piece. Don't hang out in this neighborhood because all this is neighborhoods. There's how people hang out in TikTok neighborhood. Some people hang out in, in Instagram neighborhood. We like to hang out in YouTube neighborhood. I don't hang out in social media neighborhoods because you will always be in bullshit. So when I'm done doing this work, I'm off. Yeah. Like I get off of it. And I, and I eliminated 40% of all drama just by doing that. The other 40% is um, I don't have many friends. I mean, when I think about back when we were doing a lot of bullshit, I had 16 people calling me. How the fuck did I get to 16 people calling me? Because I'm thinking I'm just a cool dude. I'm like, yeah, man, this is my number. I mean, I had them all calling me, bro, on YouTube. Like, you know, and uh, I mean, I don't regret nothing because... That makes me the person who I'm today as far as YouTube, man, how to learn, right. you know, but there is certain people that I know has loyalty that I can trust, you know, and right. those, are the, those are the only people I really mess with on that level. And that's smart. You know? That's yeah. smart. And I feel the new people doing the content now, I've watched the new people sitting in the driver's seat talking, you know, and I don't, I don't see anything wrong with it. But I just I'll, I'll watch them and I'll just notice it's like, man, they're as far as in a lot of ways they're messing up. I don't mean they're messing up with their content is bad. I don't want to be that guy. I'm saying right. that they they don't see the danger in showing their truck. And that's a to me, that's just it's just a no, no, bro. Don't tell don't show you outside of your truck. You're very good at finagling it in a way where it's like. You know, most people think, oh, I know what SoCal's truck look like. They probably don't, but they're like standing in front of their truck number. And, like <laughs> they're just showing the whole kit and caboodle. And I used to do the same thing. And I would tell the new content creators in the trucking spaces, don't do that. Don't don't show people your truck number. That, that starts them calling and saying this truck number is doing crazy stuff. They don't need to see MC. Let's talk, and let's talk about that. I mean... Before we all got on YouTube, bro, like, I mean, you want to say high school stuff, like, I never experienced stuff like that, you know, until we got on social media, bro, like, it ain't like we're doing kids here, we're doing grown grown folks on here, you know what I'm saying? And for them to, for them to go on those levels, man, it, it's just crazy. I mean, well, I'm going to judge them, whatever their fun is, whatever it is they do, they do. I'm just saying, I just, I didn't experience it until I, until I got on YouTube, like. Yeah, that's it's it's hard to adjust to, because you're thinking, why is someone calling my company about truck and in Kentucky, and I'm in LA, <laughs> like what the hell? Well, and then it's not just one call; it's like a whole fleet of people calling, you know. And then they're like remembering your truck, and I had people cut my airlines, pop my tires, pull my kingpin. I think I, think I saw a video. I think he did a video one time about. 
Because somebody did a video about airlines before. So I was like, yeah, oh. like I went to sleep, perfect airline. Woke up, I mean, like a razor cut the mic. I'm like, what the? I've had notes left on my truck. I know it's you in there. Me and you got problems, but you know, I got to go. Like weird shit. Like, whoa, dude. What are you but, but let's think about that. Let, let's, let's visit that for a second. Like, if that person was a real dude, like he wouldn't have left a note. He'd have banged down that door and wanted that smoke, wanted that action. True. And that's that's who that's who we're dealing with. You know, he he would want the bullets head on. You know, <laughs> <laughs> some people like to taste the bullets; they really do. And my thing is, um, I never come off like a tough guy <clears throat> because I feel like that's corny. But at the same time, I know my rights. Uh, you know, I know, you know, I, I know what I'm supposed to do. I know how I'm supposed to do it. And if anybody who is in this position, who is, I mean, because there's so many new creators now, you can't keep up with them. Because, like you said, when we, when we were doing this, it wasn't cool to do. It wasn't cool to do this. Now everyone does it. It's almost like a part we of. We watch. We watch. We watch YouTube change, bro. Like, yeah. When we started. There wasn't no monetization or nothing. When we first started. At least we didn't there know was, about it. <laughs> the yeah, there, there was no, uh, um, there was no stream yard. There was no hit this app. You got a hundred subs, you can go live. None of that. Like there was none of that stuff. You had to get down and make videos. You know, and yeah. that was it. There was no live stuff. I think live ruined the space personally. It, it, it what it does is it, it live, live stunts your creative juices. You know, you're not editing. You don't have to edit it. You just hit the button. You just talk. And you just cut it off. And it uh, it really does. It did ruin the space. But, you know, that's Google, man. They wanted to take it out of Twitch's hands. And they started doing it. And they started doing shorts like, like you know, like a Snapchat. And then you know what I mean? Like, they start doing reels. And it, it makes it very complicated to navigate the, navigate the space. And I see the, the younger people doing it, which is dope. But I just don't think they really know that every that, that that the companies that they have access to is watching i don't think they know that because if they did a lot of things they wouldn't do like it's driving like we started at you yeah it's just like so what i learned bro is like if i see people just not getting on youtube and doing things i have to sit back and put myself in their shoes like i was there you know what i mean like i was just as ignorant unknowledgeable which is nothing wrong with it, right? Because anything you do, you don't have the knowledge until you learn it, you know? And so so I, I understand it now, you know? And so, I agree. I just, I just feel like, I feel like those are the nuances that I talk about on my channel because everybody done told you how to drive. Learning how to shift is not a thing no more. All y'all got things on your license, so that's not a video anymore. Driving a mountain has been done a million times. Uh, how to do your time clock which is funny people need more videos like that because i'm talking to the new generation and they have no idea how to handle their time clock which is crazy but so i still do it every once in a while and it helps people so but i don't try to i try to do nuance shit you know like like i i talk about well i mean i don't know if you've been watching lately because i know you're busy but i'll talk about things like you know having an old lady and because it was it was okay for us to have an old lady back then if you call it 10 20 years ago now there's a lot of narrative about not having a significant other and they think that it's better and a lot of that shit just it it, it, it kind of rubs me the wrong way and i'd be speaking on it because i just don't think that it's helpful trucking is lonely enough we don't need to take on no plights on being more lonely like <laughs> it's, yeah. it's a lonely enough job bro yeah, I, I learned about i learned about that because I don't know if you remember, you know, my kids are small. I used to put my kids on, you know, obviously my kids are mixed. Um, I don't have no pure white kids, you know. And so pure you know, white. Not... <laughs> so, you know, I, I get on with my kids because, you know, we're having fun, we're happy, trying to show people man trucking, sappy and stuff like that. And then people would attack my kids in the comment section. Mm. I never spoke on it, but they would, you know all kinds of crazy crap and right. at that time like okay i can't put my kids on here now you know right me and you um, both stopped that at the same time yeah because it's it, it, it's it's what type of person attacks the kids bro 
what type of it person? It used to gas me up. I used to get really mad, but then I have to realize that it's just ignorance. There's a lot of that in the world. And I can't fix it. Yeah. Oh my the video God. ain't gonna fix it. Me getting mad ain't gonna fix it. There's just ignorance out there, bro. And you know, that's what it, that's where it's at. It's it's one of the realest things that could be said. You cannot something my father does, he always says, I man, it's the way you gotta do it. And I used to hate why does he always say that? Because my dad says it's okay for you to be stupid. It is not my job to make you smart. It's my, he says, my job to say something to you. And when you reject it, the way he gets out of that perceived argument, hey, man, you got to do it the way you got to do it. Mm. And I used to think that's so, but then I started finding myself saying it. Like, because, you know, younger dudes, they get a, they kind of crowd around me. I do play video games. Hold on. Hello? <laughs> freaking phone man this shit was loud I don't know what that was but anyway um i can't make you smart and it ain't my job and i and why would i want to put that emotional stress on to me trying to make everybody something that i want them to be if you, if you want to be that be ignorant that's all i can say is my point let it be talked about on the show everybody can get their sides out in the comments and when they call in and when the when the when it goes off it's over. No harping on it, no sitting around, no watching the response videos, no seeing if SoCal commented something different than I like. I, I'm not doing all that. I mean, you're gonna make yourself, you're gonna make yourself old, bro, doing that. Just let people be who they are, man. One thing about it is the channels, you know, they speak their opinion. And everybody has the right to speak their opinion. Facts. Even if it's an opinion, they go in the comment section and say, hey, it's okay, you suck, or whatever. I mean, I, I come back like, hey, man, I respect your opinion, bro. It's your opinion, bro. Like, I'm not going to change your opinion. If you feel that, you feel that, you know. And I just move on from there. I had a guy ask me, you know, TB, if you're, uh, you're always trying to help the people and everything, that's what y'all say, why didn't you speak on the uh, trucking guru type people are the the uh the people offering these trucking businesses in the box and why didn't you get involved in that and i would always i told them that there's a sucker for every <laughs> there's a sucker for every swing if you believe not having a cdl and getting a business in a box is going to work what can be said about that like what what, what do you want me to say and I, I, I thought about, it, I thought about, it. really nobody from our era jumped into that, because it's like that level of oh, that level of stupidity, and not in the person selling it, in the person buying it. What is there to say? I mean, y'all put these people on like big podcast and. You know what I'm saying? Like a lot of them went to Breakfast Club. Like it's like the amount of publicity they got. Yeah. That means that people came into our space, got all the backing, got all the publicity, <laughs> and the people who actually do it. I'll give you a perfect example. When has the truck driver been on the Breakfast Club? So let's, let's, well, well, let's think about that for a second. This is, you know, go to any truck stop. And, and what, what kind of mentality do you have in truckers? I mean, that's just what it is. What do you think producers, remember, I'm next to producers and directors and all that stuff. I, I was assistant director to one of Nipsey Hussle's uh, homies and stuff, Lou Buck's clan, you know, I'm on the credits. But the whole thing is what they don't realize is is they go they go when they have ideas they'll go park at a truck stop and look at truckers they'll go different locations stuff like that and look at things and if they don't like they say this now we can't do that and that's it nobody'll never know that's crazy 
did you think that the um did you know that era because it was about the, it was basically the pandemic era did you know all those things popping up were scams when you first seen them you talking about the uh, truck in a box situations yeah the the i can sell you a business um you don't need a cdl I can sell you this business for ten, fifteen thousand dollars. You have a driver; it'll always give you money. I didn't. I didn't believe in it because, you know, it goes all the way back to what we were taught, right? So we're we're older generation than the youngsters, right? We're either taught, you know, give somebody a, a plate of fish and let them eat, or or teach them how to fish so they can eat forever. Mm-hmm. And that and that box that that trucking in a box thing, you're not teaching them how to survive. You're not teaching them nothing. You're teaching them how to be. Uh, dependent on somebody you know just because they they spent 50 grand or 20 grand they're still dependent on somebody for you know for the, for the money right and i, I want to teach people how to be independent because that's when you have financial freedom yeah so you you felt like you just didn't believe in it at all like right when they spoke on it, it was like no not at all and and so many people wanted to speak on it i wanted to be different right you know right. i don't want to be a sheep Mm-hmm. So I want to be a leader. I teach my kids to be leaders. You know, they don't follow people in the high schools and stuff like that. They lead. My son's in the military, in the Navy, and he, he's he's really really young, bro. And even in boot camp, they promoted him. You know, where he's at right now, he's got a crew of people he leads, man. Because I teach them don't follow lead. Yeah, I mean, they were trying to press it to me as, you know, like we had a duty to speak on it. And my thing was, I don't agree because the truth is we're for truckers. If they're selling that to people with no CDL, they're not truckers. That means they're taking a business model and selling it to people who have extra income to get money out of trucking, but they're not truckers. These are just <laughs> random people that had an extra ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 and thought they could throw it into this and get a return. That really ain't got nothing to do with us. And to be honest, I haven't investigated it enough to honestly say it was a scam or not. All I know is I'm not giving nobody $15,000 <laughs> to throw people, me. I mean, come on. Yeah, I mean, people use the word scam pretty loosely, right? Right. And, and, and the reason and the thing with our community is people are not held accountable, right? They're not accountable over their, over their own decisions. Oh, I want to prime whatever, and you know they scam me because it is like, bro, they gave you a contract, you signed it. Right. No matter what deal you have, you you chose that as a man or a woman, that was okay with you. Raycons, you hear about the Raycon YouTube, like, oh man, you know the Raycon, you know, but they they jipped me about a dollar a mile, you know. But you grabbed the Raycon, you agreed to whatever that was, no matter if they made more on top or whatever they did. I no, I'm not saying I agree with it. But what I am saying is I can't be on one side or the other because they're both guilty. They're both accountable for that stuff. You know? Yeah, I mean, a shitty <laughs> deal is a scam. It's a shitty deal. Yeah. yeah. It's just that simple. If they're getting you to, if they're getting you to agree to something, if you sign something, I mean, I was at the, you know, the place I was at for a couple of years and you sign something and they send you a paper and your insurance goes up to 600 a week, because that happened to me. You agreed to it. So after a while, I started, well, I have to leave because staying is agreeing. You know, I, you agree. You keep running under that, then you are, you, you begin to accept it. And to me, it's, it's, it's one of those things where I think that I'm harder to get to work for your company now because I have a, a long list of shit I won't accept, which is also why I think these companies prefer people with less than a year experience. They don't want you to have that experience. So now me and you have been driving. I've been driving for 12. You've been driving for 20. But let's say if you didn't have your own authority in your own truck and you said, I'm just going to go out here and get me an OTR job. They're only going to pay attention to the past year or two. So they have just figured out a way to nullify all of your experience. To totally, It doesn't matter that you've been driving 20 years SoCal. What did you do in the last two years? They do that on purpose. It's, 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 it's so now you can't walk around and say, I'm a 20 year driver. Yeah, it don't matter. What did you do in the last two years? So if, if, if that means that, oh, well, I want someone fresh out of the school who was driving with Warner for a year and now they're deciding to go to a more uh, complex job, 
they prefer one of them people because those people, the truth is they're going to allow them to do more shit. And me or you are going to be like, I'm not doing that. This, so this is what I, right. This is what I discovered earlier today, right? On my live was, so my buddy, you know, we do, we do car auctions a lot, right? We've been doing mm-hmm. it since we we're kids, right? You know, when I say kid, I mean like 18. And um, so there was a 2009 Freightliner Cascade there. He picked it up for $2,700. Runs and drives and everything. It just, it's a car auction, right? They're not there to buy semi trucks. They can't drive it off if they bought it. They don't know nothing, nothing about nothing, so they stay away. But he knows me. He's like my brother. He's my play brother. And so he, he knew he was good, man. So he bought it. You know, he ended up getting a good deal, you know. But um, but he was excited. I bring this up to say this. He's excited, right? A lot of people say, oh, that's an old truck. Or that's it. You know, they're opinionated about a lot of things. It's his first truck, he's excited. And that's the same kind of excitement these companies look when they when they get people out of school. They're excited. They're excited to come to work. They're excited to be on time. You know, they ain't even looking at the money. They're just excited to be a part of it. For people down the road, you know, I mean, look at them. I mean, they're like Grinches of Christmas. Yeah, I mean, that to me, that that's a double-edged sword, bro. You know, you say, oh, I like them because they're excited. No, you don't. You like them because they don't know. And my thing is, if that's the case, if it was exciting, then why are the Grinch that crows Christmas not still excited? That's because they know. That means you, <laughs> they know. They know your health is going to go down. They know your relationships are going to spring. And they know if you're going to make those sacrifices, I should be paid. So if I tell you that, you know, no, I need more money than that. That's me knowing I'm not a Grinch. I know. So I'm not about to do this for you on. This isn't this isn't a a, a fucking field trip. This is work. I need to be compensated. And most of the time when you're dealing with these smaller little freaking or weird little companies that have these little weird ass policies, it adds up to you not being paid. So people get, you know, they get bitter. They get bitter. They get angry. They're losing shit. Their credit's going into the hole. Of course, they're going to end up that way. They're going to, if the if the industry was treating people the way they were supposed to, those dudes would not exist in the number that they do. I don't see welders complaining about pay. <laughs> where, not, where? Maybe not. Maybe you're not talking to enough of them. No, 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 no. No, bro, 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 listen, listen to me. There's the amount of welders complaining about pay is nowhere near the side, the amount, side of amount of truckers that uh, are. I agree. I agree. And you can't say because that. trucking is a seven hundred billion dollar industry compared to welding. Yeah, that's true, but it still doesn't matter. <laughs> it's not as many truckers, and not as many welders complaining about pay. It is truckers. You can go be a welder for sixty dollars an hour, hundred forty dollars an hour. You also will have unions across every single state that will support you in being a welder. You do not have that in trucking. Your health will not fall as fast as it will in trucking, unless you're inhaling the shit and you're not wearing the proper PPE. There's a reason why. It's not just, oh, this is bigger and this is smaller. No, you're fucking us. (laughs) And we feel some type of way about it. So after a while, people start, they start getting bitter. They start, I mean, it's a natural thing. If your old lady keeps cheating on you, eventually you're going to be like, fuck this bitch. So let's talk about that. Yeah, let's talk about that. You got a good point. You say, well, they're fucking us. But here's the thing. Who's really accountable for that? At any time, if you don't agree to any kind of wage, whatever, you can always quit and go do better somewhere else. That's true. How many times, how many times have I came on here complaining about a rate? I don't know. I don't think you, you know? have at all. Not at all. Okay. Because... I'm not going to take something that I'm not going to agree with. I'm not going to work for free. So I'm Kyle, not going to take all that so stuff. Kyle, that's, I'm, I'm going to be real shit with you. That's a white person corporate cop out. That's what that is. I'm being real with you. I'm not, I'm not trying to be ignorant. I'm being definitely definitely real with you. Well, if they don't know, then fuck them. <laughs> Come on, bro. Like, no, I'm not saying, I'm not saying that they don't know, fuck them. I'm just saying it's like people at McDonald's, right? In California. Like, when I grew up, McDonald's were for high school students so you can pay for gas insurance and learn how to pay your bills and be responsible. I agree. Today, it's we need to get that minimum wage up, like it's twenty twenty five dollars up here to work mm-hmm. at a 
at a, only at a fast food restaurant. If you work somewhere else, you get less. Why is that? It's, it's done. It's done, bro. But yeah, I it's totally the mentality of people they they deal with, right? So I'm not saying fuck them. It's just everybody's responsible to try to make or educate to make more or, or try to move in a way to try to do better, try to make more. Mm-hmm. Now, some sometimes some people can't. If you live out there in the middle of the forest on a lake and there's nothing out there but a damn um, IHOP, you're screwed working on IHOP. You know what I'm saying? Like you're, whatever they give you, you're just you're just stuck. You know. But it starts with us and it ends with us of whatever we want to do in our life. Period. People yeah, at McDonald's, like I said, that's they're trying not- to create. The, they're, they're trying to raise that up to where you can you can you can support a family of four. So Cal, that sounds so good, bro. It sounds good. It's milky. Sounds like sweet buttermilk, but it's bullshit. I hate to say it, but it is. It's bullshit. And then the truth is, if that was the case, why can't y'all hold people? We're we're industrious. We're Americans. We believe in pulling ourselves up from our bootstraps. If it's just that, with all the amount of podcasts out giving people information, why are y'all not retaining drivers? Why I'll give you a better one. Why aren't these drivers' kids becoming drivers? You became a driver and your daddy was a driver. Well, you know what I didn't do? What? I didn't push my kids to be truckers. That, okay, you, know, you know why you didn't? Because <laughs> you, I see the future with this autonomous crap and this electric right. crap and all that stuff. Right. And Because eight years ago, you know? everybody told me I was bullshit for the autonomous shit. Now people see it. But what I will say is this, Bro, you don't do it because take- you don't think that you don't think the deal is as good as when you started. No, man, do something else. The whole thing is I've been hauling electric trucks for like 10, 15 years, bro. It's been Dude, here. You are not telling your child to drive trucks because you no longer think the deal is as good as when you started. It's that for, if it was, why would why would you telling our kids to do di- it? Because the deal is still good right now. For right? you. But it's not going to be good for them to retire on because it's changing too fast. So I mean, the facts of the, fa- deal, bro. the facts are the facts, bro. We know what's happening. They they want to eliminate drivers altogether. They yeah. want these tr- they want one guy in the front truck and three behind them that driven by robots, and that's what they want. That's it. So I didn't want my kids to start a career being at 15 years and find out there ain't no more truckers. I totally agree with you. You're, you're now they're you're, older, trying to figure out how am I going to retire and their stuff. I totally agree with you. I take the same statement, which goes to my previous premise. It's not a good deal. So you're not keeping people because the more you lean towards this, the less shit you take away, the less payout it is, the less people that are interested in it. So the deal is not good. That that I'm, that's that's the point. The deal is not good. So once you get to people realizing that the deal is not good. And they're getting more and more reasons why they won't work for you, more and more reasons why they will leave. Then it's like, oh, well, we're not interested in them. Let's talk to the fuckers that don't know. Now I just want the person that just got here because they're excited. How the fuck are they going to be excited about something that's not going to exist in 10 years? That means they don't know. Right? Right. That means they, that, that's, that, that, is a, that is an abuse. Why would we put these people that are excited into a position for them to not be employable in 10 to 15 years. That's a fuck. That's terrible. It is. You know, when you take someone that's, that's excited, right? They're like a sponge of knowledge. They want to learn everything. And these mega carriers, these companies, they don't want them to learn. You know, and you're right. They, they hit up the deck and all that stuff so they can keep them. You know, I don't agree with how, how they do things with truckers. There's a lot I disagree with, you know, but. One thing I learned is there's a lot of jobs out there where a lot of people disagree with. One of my one of my homeboys, man, um, I don't know, he builds airplanes or he does some shit over there. And uh they didn't get the contract or something, they got laid off. You know, Boeing. There's a lot, there's a lot of that going on. You know, that and, and, and not being political, that's why when people choose to vote for a president, wake up. I don't give a shit if the president's green, yellow, or purple stripes. What comes <laughs> oh, out of that person's mouth, and if he stands on what he says, and that's what's going to benefit you and your kids. And I don't mean food stamps and, and Section Eight housing and all that bullshit, because that just teaches that just teaches you how to you know depend on people. And I'm not with that, man. It's all about being independent, right? That's what I, can't, I, can't, I can't disagree with you on that. I, I do believe. Um... 
these last four years, proof is in the pudding, man. It is what it is. Now, I don't know what people's affiliations are or if they don't like the way people talk. I don't care about nothing about people talk. Let's look at the pudding. The pudding is what it is. Just the, it is what it and is. It's, it's, and it's ignorance, bro. It's ignorance, man. Look what happened. To, was it Georgia? I remember it was a congressperson, a senator, or whatever. You know, they talked to a certain race, like, get me in, I'll help you out. And then that person got in, didn't help out that nationality at all. Right. I, you know, it, it just sucks, man. You know? Everything becomes a political football. Nothing, nothing's really going to get done. That's why I tell people all the time is you got to figure out what is good for you. And I've, you know, I figured out, I figured out what was good for me. I started doing it. I stayed out of the way. And that's your best bet when you're, when you're doing this. Yeah. Figure out what's good for you. Everybody doesn't have the same niche. Damn sure everybody don't have the same connections. <clears throat> so you got to figure out what works for you. When you figure out what works for you, do it. And here goes another one. That's a big one. When you figure out what works for you and you do it. Yeah. Don't talk about it. Well, I would say don't talk about it on social media. Right, right, right. Don't that 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 would be the best way to say it. Don't come on here yeah. and talk about it. You got your, your folks you're close to, man. Man, you always want to uplift everybody, you know. Exactly, but don't talk about it because if you talk tell about people, it on social media, they're going to adjust shit because they watch us. So they're like, oh, okay, I see what you're doing. Well, SoCal told them how to go to ABCDFG, you know. I'm gonna fuck with it now. Like, don't don't just. If you got people you love, put on the people you love. And if you are going to talk about it online, talk about it in broad strokes. And what people don't realize on social media, too, is like when I do trucking content, like my mentees and stuff, I I actually taught them how to create businesses, how to be successful, like way beyond trucking one-on-one. But when I'm on here, I'm just talking trucking one-on-one to people. And it could work for some people, you know, might not work for some people, you know, it's, it's not a hundred percent of nothing, you know? So people don't realize that, you know? Yeah. I stopped doing the, the, big, the big, the whole lease conversation and owning conversation. I just feel like it was an elite conversation. You know, the truth is most people are at the one-on-one stage. Correct. They're, they're not, they're not going to understand how your insurance works with your, with your uh, authority. Right. You know, and, and if, and, and, and if you make, if we make it sound too good, they will rush towards it and, and lose out. So now you're getting people right. who are listening to you and running to do it when they're not ready to do it. Correct. So it's like some information It's not that you shouldn't give it to people. It's just that some information is not, the person is not ready for the information. You know what I mean? Like they see you. Oh, well, SoCal's doing it, so I can get an authority in a truck and a trailer and no contract. Like I can do that. I can, you need to, because they're picking what they want to listen to from you. Correct. You'll tell them, "Hey, man, make sure you make the relationship first. They'll ignore that shit. How do I get that truck? Then they'll get the truck. Uh, make sure you do this with your. Uh, I ignore that. How do I get? Next thing you know, you know they have a two hundred sixty thousand dollar truck, expensive trailer. And the trailer sitting in the yard and they're hauling Amazon because they don't have time on their freaking, <laughs> they don't have time on their um, authority to even get any loads. Nothing against watched, Amazon, personally. Nothing against Amazon. I'm just saying. Yeah, I watched the video. I'm not even going to speak on what channel it was, but he put a, he, he put a truck over there that, with a custom brand new Peterbilt saying he's been driving for 30 years and I can't make his mortgage payment. <laughs> Now, when you listen to this shit, right? Like, it's just him and one truck, right? Nothing yeah. wrong with that. But you're running the, you're running just the load boards. Now, when you run just the load boards, you really can't plan in five years how it's going to go down. Your company depends on the load board. If it goes down and up, whatever, so does your life lifestyle. And so. Him having a, a $300,000 truck, he can't make his market. I didn't feel sorry for that dude. I'm like, bro, you bought, for a single guy, you bought way too much truck <laughs> to be on the spot market. And that's just a fact. And I can't, I can't feel sorry because you can't make your mortgage payment. Now, if he was in a, a 
1999 paid off Freightliner. Columbia. You know, and couldn't make his mortgage. I, I feel for the dude a little bit. Like, you know, she, I need to reach out and try to help the dude, but. Right. You picked vanity over purpose, over function. Because, mm-hmm. I mean, everybody. That, that, the did. whole thing was custom. The inside. I, I mean, I custom trucks out, you know, but. You have to, thing is, to do that. This whole thing is, I mean, everything in the floor is everything. Talking about he can't make his mortgage payment. Like, bro, you just don't even look right right now, bro. You, you chose that truck over putting money in the bank and make sure your family settled. Right. But, and that goes back to my original, one of my first plights in trucking was my war against Peterbilt. And it wasn't a personal war. I like a 379. They're fun. I'm not, I'm not a hater. But my war against it was that the people in the comments, the people that are in the lives, you should not be thinking about that. You're going for a premium truck when you know nothing. It's just that freaking simple. You're going for a premium truck, and and then you then when you do save up twenty thousand dollars um training, are you gonna go take ten? Are you are you gonna go get take ten and get a Cascadia, something you can manage? Are you gonna go get this long nose thing that you can't manage? That's why I was talking about. Oh man, don't don't worry about the Peterbilt. Go for a Cascadia. Go for a Cascadia. Everybody beat me up for it, but the truth is, like you said, it's too much truck. Your truck costs this much money. Your income has to be this much money. And you cannot guarantee that without, like SoCal says, relationships. You're not going to the spot market and say, I got to always bring in this amount of money. Well, you can't do that on the spot market. It's a spot market. You don't know what it's going to do. Too much competition. It's too, it's too much competition. It's not like getting a contract at uh, uh, Trojan Condoms. You know, and <laughs> they're never going to stop kicking them things out. They just go forever. As many loads as you can pull, they're going to give you. It's not that situation on the spot market, bro. It's just not. And that's another reason, like, I don't get on there and talk about the rates I get. Because one of my homeboys one time, and shout out to him, he pulled me aside and he said, look, bro, he goes, you got to get in reality. He goes, in your world, is not everybody else's world. Facts. You know, you we've had that, understand that. Yeah, he goes, you got to understand that. And I had to because I'm on here like, man, I'm getting it. Why ain't you getting, you know, but yeah. And it makes people angry. It's reality. Yeah. It makes people angry. And like I said, when you're on a, when you're on a platform, you're talking to a wider spectrum of people. And the truth is maybe 2% of those people could possibly get your rate. Maybe. If they, they, knew their, if they knew the right person. And give an example, right? Not saying that's me or you or anything, but let's just say you're at a table eating steak and lobster, and then the guy next to you is he has a small French fry and a cheeseburger. You know they're gonna be envious of you a little bit. And they're gonna hate you because how you're eating. And when you're on social media, you gotta you gotta I mean, well you ain't gotta do shit, but just I understood the situation. Right. You know, so. And the truth is, the truth is. You have to think of the envy and that you can't help them. If you if you're if you have your rate based on things you've built up in your relationships or however you get it, because I don't know how you get your shit. The truth is that advice does not match that person. You can't tell a fucker in Cincinnati the route to get to your rate. You just can't. You can't tell a person of a of a uh, different level in society. Oh, I mean, all you got to do is go do this. It, the truth is, it's not true. I mean, loans get kicked back through uh, uh, through loan writers for shit like zip codes and geographic location, all type of things. It's just you can't say that. You can't. It, it, the truth is, it's just a not truth. So all you could do is give them the one on ones. Amen. These are the foundational things you need to do to make sure you're getting the most out of your career, and hopefully. You know, things will blossom for you. Maybe you'll meet that person. Maybe you'll meet that guy who owns a farm and needs all this shit moved out of the elevator. Maybe you'll meet the guy who owns a a car park lot that doesn't have enough drivers to move these cars. Maybe you'll run into that person, but I can't. There's no path. Correct. There's no direct path because if there were, the path, it would be filled up already. Mm-hmm. There's no path, man. You just gotta you gotta keep going and keep doing what you're supposed to do. I mean, the farms. I hate to say the farms just saved my life, bro. The farm saved my life because you know what I liked about the farms? They're straight shooters. All right. They're old school. They're to the point. 
if you can show up here, I will give you a load. That's including Hall and Hay. And if, if mustard seed is up, the load will be up. You can go to the thing and track it. It just, there's no, oh, it's up, but we're not giving it up. No, if this is up here, it's up here. You take it, get it out of here. And how much, you, we need it all gone because we can't just have it sitting here and rot. You have to take it, get it out of here. There's no arguments. There's no bullshit. There's no social. There's no none of that. As many trucks can come and get this elevator empty is what we want. That's why I like the farm. Oh, it's the harvest. I need you to ride along this thing and fill it up and take it to the other side of the elevator. And there's fuckers making fucking $40,000 in three months doing that shit. See, I didn't even know that was a thing. I've lived in, I've, I've seen places where people will stop their regular job just to work the harvest for two months and then go back to their regular job. I knew nothing about the farm. You have hopper, you have rock, you have, you have um, um, pair pneumatic trailers that are hauling sugar and all weird different shit to these places that make all the products you make. These places are straight shooters, bro. They don't do the keep away with the rate con. They don't play those fucking games. Just pick the shit up and take it. And that's why I like the farms, bro. And, they're, and the truth is, they're not everywhere, but the farms are in a lot of places, in most states. There's a farm network in your state. I know you're in California. Yeah. And the reality, too, is there ain't no rate con as you're going through a broker or you're going through something like that. Like, when I was hauling hay, they didn't give me no rate con. I mean, I was unloading one time in Arizona. And uh, I had to do a stay over. And the guy says, hey, man, I got a load for you, man. You want to haul it? I gave him some crazy outrageous rate for like 10 miles. Like, it was crazy. But I told him, I said, I'll let you put as much as you can put on that trailer, bro. And I charged his butt, boy. But it was worth it for him, right? And we were so full of hay on that trailer, bro. We had to squeeze on the back of it and had to tie it down before the squeeze let go or fall off the back of the trailer. Mm-hmm. You know, but. It was just a handshake. I didn't say, oh, yeah, I didn't say, where's my rate con? I mean. A lot of trucking, especially old school, that's what they're used to. If you say something, you stand on it, that's what it is. You yeah. never need a piece of paper to back up what you say. No. Take it is what you get. And and the truth is, as long as we have it to get out of here, you just keep coming back and getting it until it runs out. That's what I think I like about it. As long as it's in here, you just show up and we'll fill you up to the max you want to be filled. How much they even ask, how much you want? Uh 25 towns, so and so and so. Done. Get out of here. And I just felt like, oh, what I didn't like about trucking those years past is I don't like you telling me something and it not being that. Right. That's why I'm gravitating towards this, because when they say something, that's what the fuck it is. This is 120 a barrel, 120 a bushel. And that's what the fuck it adds up to. They don't have time to sit there and be like, it is, but if you know you drop it off at two, you drop two cents on the bushel. Like they're not doing that, bro. Like, <laughs> it's like and, and then here goes another thing that I don't know how to I don't know how to express this to you. Someone who is um conscious of social classes, I didn't feel none of that at the farm, bro. Because you know why? Everybody, including the owner, has dirty hands, bro. Do what you're here to do. You get your money. They're not playing the, oh, well, you know, you got to know somebody and haul expensive freight for two years before you can get into reliable. No, they're not doing that. Can, you got your license? And how many, and how many people are you lined up next to? You know, they're doing to sit back and complaining. And, you know, I can't wait to get out the truck. And I can't wait to get None out the truck. Like, it's to the point. It's to the I point. Agree, they keep like, their shit up and they go. That's it. They're not, they're not saying, I mean, they're not really saying much of anything. They're just, hey, man, they wait on the elevator. They get out. They shoot the shit a little bit. Once the elevator starts moving, they're out of there. It's just to the damn point. And that's what I needed in my life. I need something that was to the point. I hate it working for the, like the, the weird owner-op only companies. You know, when I had my own truck, I get there and they'll tell you, you know, this is two, three fifty nine a mile. And then you realize you're sitting for three days a week. <laughs> and you're thinking, I could have just went to Swift and ran every day. What the fuck, man? I, I, they would tell me shit like, oh, we don't have any loads. The whole company has no loads. I'm like, so when you leave the regime, people run out of loads. When you're at the regime, the regime is running out of loads too, bro. Don't That's get it scary. They run out of loads too. 
that's the and story. you know it's crazy because i can pull up videos bro when i warned everybody before this even happened i told everybody to get ready you know um there's so many i can talk about man and, and i don't know why maybe it's experience or history because kind of sort of history history repeats itself i don't know what it is but you know i saw the stuff coming you know um, i had two trucking companies But uh, once we lost Trump, because that, that one truck company was on the spot market 100%, I got rid of it. Mm. You know, because, um, yeah, it was drastic as far as, as the money. Yeah. But, uh, it has I mean, to be you, you, you got to be able to stand on, on business, man, and see how it is. And that's what, there's no wishing in this stuff, bro. Don't, I tell people all the time if you have a savings account and it's not going good for you, don't listen to people saying it's going to get better. Just hang on. It's going to get better until your savings account's gone. Now you owe them money and now you can't move and go get in a better situation. Right, but like, now your job stick to re- Yeah, stick to reality. If it ain't going good for you, it ain't going good for you. But then you're a job hopper. And people thought that was no big deal until, until it is. And now there's yeah. company that pay you money. They're looking at your resume. And if you got like 15 jobs in a year, no, not hiring. It's three now. Yeah. It's three. But the truth is, you know what I've learned? Those companies that are taking that corporate mandate, I'm not interested in working for. I'd rather work for a good old boy on the honest system, on the honor system, than a corporate company. I would There's work a lot of that for, still out there. Yeah, a lot of handshake. All right, I mean, you do this, or you come in at seven, you handle this for me, you're good. I'd rather deal with that than deal with a corporate company. Because number one, I think the policies that corporate's putting down, that shit don't match drivers. That's gonna fuck them. Because drivers don't are not corporate. You know, they have little things you do can offend a driver like, oh, we're switching to every two weeks pay. Yeah. So they don't gonna, ask you, there ain't no vote. It just happens. There ain't no I remember, and I'm sure you do too, from the CB I don't say the word on social media because you the tube gets all funny with the videos, but mm-hmm. back during the uh, CB situation, the 19 thing, we were making a lot of, a lot of money, right? And company drivers, they're making like 80 cents a mile and, and you know, all that kind of stuff. I'm like, look, man, I said, you're, you're doing a con and, and they would say, Hey, I like this because it's better than percentage, you know, because when things slow down, I still get 80 cents a mile. Mm-hmm. I'm like, that's not the case. <laughs> and what happens? You know, when things got the two dollars on the thing, they say, "Hey, look, we gotta either cut your rate, give you a new contract, or you gotta quit." Or you gotta quit. And people were shocked. You know. And there's no reason to be shocked, man. The truth is, at the end of the day, corporate has a. Uh, they got they the have, same business too, bro. They have, yeah, they have a job to do, and that's to make profit, bro. And I, I said, I had that big conversation with guys who would talk to me and be like, oh, you know, my company loves me. No, they don't, bro. That's that excitement. No, they don't. You are a workhorse. You're like a, you're like a, you're like a forklift. If you, that forklift stops working, they replace it. You're, they don't love you, bro. They're not, one of the biggest lies in trucking is we're like a family. That's bullshit. That is bullshit, bro. You're not like a family. Don't feed into that. They do that for you to drop your guard. You need to be looking at your settlement. You need to make sure what they say they're going to give you, you get. And, and if write you get- down what you're doing, bro. Like, don't sit back like, oh, shit, how'd you do this week? I don't know. I don't know when I get my settlement. No. No, you got to book, man. You got to write that yeah, shit down. You got to write everything down. Write every load down in a book, how much it was. At the end of the week, you tally that stuff up. So many people, they just go out and drive, no clue what they make. Then they get their settlement like, dang, I thought I did better than that. Dang, I, you know. Right. Now, how do you Crazy know enough. that this load isn't good for you if you're not totaling up your gross as the week is going? I had a young dude tell me, man, ain't nobody trying to write all that. I said, so you're just not writing this down? Oh, no, it's all on an app. Dude, you're freaking, you trust the app they made? You're insane, bro. You got to write your shit down and keep all your paperwork. They're not even keeping their paperwork. 
Like, dude, you got to keep that shit for like 30, 60 days, man. You got to keep that. So when they tell you, oh, man, you didn't scan this two weeks ago, you can reproduce it. Oh, no, nah, man. I mean, it gets in the way. I say, y'all have to understand that you have to pay attention to your shit. It's a microwave mentality that they're trained on. You know, that's what it is. And in the beginning, like, I was really trying to change the world. And um, I learned I, I can't. No. But if I can change, help one person, I'm good with it. You know, that, that, they're trying to help everybody on social media. Try to, you can't, bro, because everybody's mentality is different. And everybody, you can have a group of 10 people in front of you and teach them the same thing. Yeah, everybody everybody's going to take your information different. Yeah. And yeah, someone will take this video and say, that means don't drop trucks. Then someone will say, that means I got to be on or out. And the next person to say, I'm going to stay company. Like, like y'all got three things out of the same conversation. Mm-hmm. But my main and thing me, is pay attention to what you think you want. I hate when people, when you, I hate when a person asks me, what company should I go to? Dude, I have no way of telling you that. Exactly. You need to figure out what company you go to based on what your needs are. Or, how, hey, SoCal, should I go buy this truck? Oh, that's the word. I tell people, I tell people, I said, look, bro. I don't know your family situation. I don't know your bill situation. None of that. I don't oh. know anything going on with your situation to know about anything. Car notes are rampant right now. Do you know what these little bastards are paying for these cars? Twelve hundred, fourteen hundred dollars a month, and then saying I'm not making enough money. Uh, I don't know if you're not making enough money, buddy. Maybe you can't afford your lifestyle. I talked to a dude who lives in Atlanta. He's paying nine hundred dollars a month for his car. $2,400 a month for rent at a place he don't see. If you, one of the biggest portions of making it in trucking is having your finances in order. That's life. That's what people don't understand. Like, like a lot of stuff we speak about, like myself, it's trucking, it's business. Like when I say something, you can apply that to any business you want. It's not just trucking. And what you're just saying that's life in general. That's being responsible, a responsible person. Always have your finance in order. Your 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 wife, girlfriend, whatever, she's not gonna be happy if if, if you don't know keep your, how to keep your household in they order. They don't want your wife. That was the last it's conversation. Just, they don't want a wife. Yeah, yeah, it's just uh, it's life right, in like, general. The reason why I say particularly to trucking because trucking is volatile. It goes up and down. You do not have a salary. You're not you're not going to some place and they're gonna give you a salary for sixty thousand dollars and you can freaking finance yourself down to the T and still make your bills next month. You can make nothing. So let me correct that. Your bills low. Let me correct, let me correct that. Right. Because what we know and don't know, we you know, and don't know. Right. There is people out there really getting, truly getting salary out there. There is people out there getting exactly 2000 a week, exactly 1500, no matter what they do, they're getting it. You know, and that, that's a salary. There is people that. out there really getting it. You so know, there's, there's so peep game, peep game. What I'm about to say, SoCal. I know don't... people personally getting it. Okay, I'm not saying you don't. I'm saying there isn't enough of them for them to apply to this argument. Correct, correct. correct. You're, if you're talking about a thousand companies out of the hundred thousand that are in America, that ain't that ain't everybody. So for the most right. part, especially on this correct. channel, these are OTR. For the most channels. part, correct. For the most these, part, these guys are OTR. Yes, these guys are OTR. If you're not at Tri-State. Which is about the only place people really know that is doing that. That's one company. Trucking is up and down. You're not gonna keep getting that money, bro. You know they hold our words, right? And that's why I try to, you know, like you say, most, right? Because if we just say, "Hey, man, you're not gonna get that," you're gonna have the one person say, "Hey, I'm over here and I get sorry not." So then they're fucking yeah, so, because if so, it's all like I said right now, name ten companies that are given salary. That means that it's not, you can't even say most. It is infinitesimal of the people that are going to give you a salary. Infinitesimal. Even the people at Gemini don't get a salary. They don't show up. They don't get paid. It is infinite. It's like 1%, one of 1% that do it. So when we talk, if you're talking to the masses of people, you have to speak in a generalization that will help best help them. If there's one company, if all 3,000 people that see this video try to apply to that company, you're all not going to get in. So you have to put yourself in a position 
where you're okay. Most of y'all are getting paid by the mile. Most. If you're local, you're getting hourly, hopefully. Oh, my God, hopefully. Hopefully. And even if you do, they can play with your hours. If the contract goes down, oh, man, I only need you part-time. It is not just across the board like that. It's not going to be. So how can you sign on for with a car note bigger than SoCal's when you're 23? You have a $1,400 car note, and your money is doing this. You work at fucking Warner or Prime or Silk Swift or some shit like that. It makes no sense because when it dips, your car note's not going to be like, hey, man, SoCal, it's cool. Just keep the 1000 until you, you know, until you do better. That's not how they call that, right? Huh? You know what they call that, right? You know what they what? call that? New money. See, in life, there's old money and there's new money. So okay. old money has a lot of money, and you'll never see it on YouTube. They ain't, right. they ain't flossing it. They ain't doing nothing. You got new money. Look what I got. Look what I got. Look what I got. You know, until they don't know more. Until they don't know more. And then how do you pay? How do you pay that uh 785 BMW five series note when you get negative checks how are you doing that's why when you see an old dude say man you don't need that and they say oh no i had one dude said my pride won't let me drive in a beater what what the fuck does your pride have to do with that that is crazy that is crazy if i went to socal right now who has nice cars and I said, "Soka, hey man, look." Don't don't listen, don't listen to that man. I got a yeah, nineteen. Yeah. Don't let that man lie to you, bro. Driveway leaking oil. If I and went to SoCal and I said, "Hey man, I'm moving overseas," I got a I got a Toyota Corolla, man. Instead of taking it to the junkyard, you can have it. He would take it. <laughs> he would take it, bro. He wouldn't say, "Oh, my pride won't let me drive in no Toyota Corolla." He would take it, bro. Like, I I feel like I feel like the. I don't know. I, I go through it's a the mindset, bro. It's the mindset. I'm trying to tell you. Everything starts with everything starts with you, ends with you. The whole everything is mindset. Life, trucking, business, money, everything's a mindset. That's just where it's at. And you, you can either have a positive mindset or a negative mindset, right? But it's two things. When you have a positive mindset, you know, what how do they say that shit goes? Uh some uh, bees attracted to, hun to honey or whatever. Mm -hmm. If you have a negative mindset, flies attracted to shit. You know, yep. what company do you want around you? Yeah, I can agree to that because, you know, I I had a guy who told me that um, there's no way that I drive because I wouldn't be able to do this. I was like, what? <laughs> this takes an hour to do. I had a young kid tell me, how do you live like that when everybody's not making money in trucking? Well, that's the first lie, because everybody's everybody's not sucking in trucking. That's 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 bullshit. But whoever's putting this out there, or if you go to TikTok and see the people saying, Oh, it's over for trucking, and they get a million hits, it can turn your mind, like you said, your mind state to that <clears throat> thought process. And another thing that I do that none of these new kids who are wearing thousand dollar sneakers in the truck, whatever. I live modest. You know, SoCal's worth $76 million. And he has on a $100. regular t-shirt. $100. <laughs> he has $400 glasses on. $100. <laughs> and he'll keep saying, I don't got no money. I don't got no money. No, he has, I have $8 glasses on. SoCal has regular glasses on. He has a regular t-shirt on and a ball cap. He doesn't have $1,000 shoes on. I say, oh, it's just my preference. No, that's bullshit. That's not just your preference. That's a stupid decision. I don't know. I don't know what to say it. It's a dumb decision. And I get passionate about it because this level of programming is everywhere. I was at Denny's, SoCal, and the freaking waitress parked the Denali. <laughs> what the fuck you do you have a Denali you, for? But, but hey, you don't know her story, though. <laughs> she might have a nice husband with a nice ass job to buy for her and says, baby, look. I don't want you just sitting home. You need yeah. to do some, you know. And her passion is waitressing at the dinner. Here's an alley. Yeah. <laughs> I had a female. Hey, I had a female like that that liked that hop. You know I mean? <laughs> she drove a, a, a was a S S eighty Volvo to that bitch. You know what I'm saying? Why like you should check in, dude. You're a if you first of all, the, I'm talking about a new Denali. That thing's hundred and twenty thousand dollars. 
You're driving a hundred. I just bought two brand new ones. We had to pay cash because the damn interest rate was too high. You the studios. So this regular person driving a hundred and twenty thousand dollar car to a job she's gonna make twenty eight thousand dollars at. But it's her passion, so I'll back off. Whatever. You like so, shoveling eggs into people's mouths. That's your shit. I get it. So this person's different than me, right? Right. So let me tell you a funny story. You want to laugh? I'm going to tell you a funny story. Mm-hmm. I like telling stories. True stories, though, not bullshit. So once upon a time, I got tired of going places and getting door dings on nice vehicles, right? So anytime, and it's a true statement, anytime I wanted to go grocery shopping, and this is before Walmart would deliver your stuff and, you know, all this delivery crap, right? So this was, so the car was, I'm going to say somewhere around 2016, because I know what years the cars were. Uh-huh. So I would go to Enterprise and rent a car for the weekend so I can go grocery shopping, go to all these parking lots and go do everything I got to go do. One time, I'm sitting there in my nice car. I ain't going to tell you what it was. Black <laughs> on black. Clean. Trying to rent the damn Toyota Yaris. And moron rents a car and backs up and smashes the side of my car. Right there in the parking lot. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you just, you just can't. You can't. You can't help it. <laughs> I can't believe that. Oh, what my God. Saying? That was crazy. And with me... Once that shit gets hit, I don't even want it no more. Like, you know, I, I don't even want it. I got rid of it. I don't. I don't want some shit's been hit. You had to bondo it up or whatever. I don't want repaint. I don't want that shit. So it was we gone. listen to the confessions of a rich person. No, 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 no. If someone dents his car, he throws it away. That's some rich people shit. So you're twisting the story around. No, I'm not twisting. I'm <laughs> giving clarity to it. I have four. I have many dents in my Odyssey. I'm not throwing it away. That's some rich so, people shit, man. Don't listen to that crap. Dude. Like, so, Cal, do you understand you... <laughs> everything about you says a rich person. Everything. Look at me. Do I look rich to you? The first time I met SoCal, he picked me up in a stretch limo. <laughs> Took me to a $100 steak a night... $100 steak steakhouse. That was his entry into his first interview with Trucker Brown. Insanity. You oh, he had, uh, what's his name? Ramar, whatever his name was, his name? Uh, your, your trainee? Yeah, I had my trainee. I think it was uh, uh, a. Yeah, Ramar, what's his name? Yeah, we just call him yeah, Ramar. Yeah. yeah, he still yeah. follows me. But... Yeah, yeah, he's cool. And then I, I, got, I got criticized like, man, you did that to impress Trucker Brown? I said, no, I wasn't doing that to impress him. I didn't want to drive. I'm not riding in a damn taxi cab. Rich no, like, <laughs> When I yeah. don't want to drive, I tell the person I'm picking up to drive. Like, hey, man, SoCal, you drive. I don't feel like driving. I don't get a limo, SoCal. I don't get a limo. No. This is all going to go bad now. <laughs> we need to change the subject. <laughs> and let me tell you, that steak was so good. Oh, my God. I mean, I, I, uh, I remember SoCal, one of SoCal's highlights of the night. I said, I'll take A1 sauce. He was like, hey, you don't ask for freaking steak sauce in a steakhouse <laughs> like this. <laughs> I said, holy shit, I was fucking down, man. Jesus Christ. And he was oh, right. Man. He was good without steak sauce. And now I always gauge a place if do I need steak sauce or, or is the steak sauce already on the table or they assume you don't want it. Because if they assume you don't want it, it's about to be a good ass steak. So you got educated. True. I didn't know that. You got you got to admit, man, we had a lot of fun. Oh yeah. Even when, to go, even when we went to go eat over at the Queen Mary, you know. No, I think you ate you took me to the Queen Mary. You also you were the first person to take me to Roscoe Chicken and Waffle. I had never been there. We did went there and it was in Long Beach. Yeah. Yeah. It was it was some fun, it was some fun times back then, bro. But like I said, also I was excited. I was excited. LaShawn, LaShawn was new to the whole situation too, you know. He didn't understand yeah. all that little soft stuff and all that stuff too. Like it's funny. Nah, he didn't. He didn't. He didn't really get it either. But one thing we realized more than anything is that West Coast people are different because we are East Coast people. Yeah. 
and West Coast people are, you know, they're a little bit different than it is in, uh, on the East Coast. But I enjoy my, I'm not, I have no regrets. I have steps I shouldn't have took, but I don't regret them. You should never regret anything that you do because good or bad, it makes you who you are today. Whatever you do in your past, that's that that leads up to your, to your success. If you took it out of the bat step, you might not be successful than you are today. You got to have them both. You got to never regret your past. It created you. Right. Hey, man, I, I don't disagree. But before we get out of here, we just yapped for an hour and 20 minutes. Before we get out of here, where can they find you, SoCal? Um, everywhere. Um, YouTube, Instagram. TikTok, it's also Cal Trucker. I'll put his links at the bottom of the video. I'm probably going to cut this up. Uh, it will be available on Patreon first. And, um, you know, I appreciate y'all for coming through. I appreciate SoCal for stepping through. Maybe we'll make this a regular thing. I know LoShawn wanted it to be a regular thing. So, uh, um, here to help the truck community. Hmm? I'm always here to help the truck community. Right. So me and you oh, would have to figure good. out we would have to figure out what our segment would be about. I don't know what it would be about, Soka. What what would our segment be about? We can talk back and forth on IG and figure out. I know what LoShawn wants to talk about, but I'm sure you have something in your angle that you would want to talk about. So uh what's today? Today is Wednesday. So next Wednesday, hopefully SoCal will have something he has to say and we can jump on here and um discuss it. I am going to also give SoCal a warning that I gave him years ago. Now that you've done this video, you know you're in some deep shit. You know, oh, they're, yeah. coming, they're coming for I you. was trying to watch what I said, but you, you just put my whole foot right in the deep shit about all that stuff, man. Hey, man. That's, what, that's what TB does, though. <laughs> Let me tell you what I learned about this. Let me tell you what I learned about TB, boy. And I watch him do this with people, right? He will ask you some stuff. You know, not being mean, but people got to understand how this stuff goes, right? He'll say some stuff, and then they run off with it, and they just run in the dog shit, took baths in it, and everything. Next thing you know, here comes all the flies. Well, here's the here's the truth, so Cal. Yeah. I want to speak the truth, and we are doing content. Correct. A lot of the rules. It went good, it went good today, except for that rich shit. That's not true. But everything Which else. Is the is only true factual. thing in the whole video. <laughs> <laughs> now that works <laughs> get out of here bro you were like a freaking swimsuit model when i met you you were 400 pounds bigger yeah you, yeah. you know what does that right money what does that money does that i was good back then too though money does that no, no good you, back you then signed too. a major deal and you went to hollywood and they gave you like the olympic joint and all this, all the stuff that they, Roker went to, you went and got all that done, fancy stuff. Come on now, your chin wouldn't be like that. So God, that means you went and got some some plastic surgery done, maybe a new nose or something. Is your eye color changed? You you walk up, you say, "Hey, I want I want that Michael Jackson special." <laughs> <laughs> so you you get money on a different level. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna find a couple of concepts and um. What I really would like to do with you, SoCal, is you to react to the TikTok shit I complain about. So I'm going to bring you back on here Wednesday, and uh, we're going to work on a reaction segment where I'm going to play the shit they say, and I'm just going to let you have at it. And the shit you're about to hear, man, you're going to be like, what the fuck is going on? And I'm just going to let you say what you're going to now, now, understand, I'm putting you in deep water because these TikTok fuckers respond. So they're going to be like, who the fuck is this old white guy telling me that I can't do bikini shows in my sleeper? Like, it's going to be, it's going to be. What the hell? Oh, yeah, that's the thing. That's not, I didn't make bikini that Bikini shows in, in a sleeper? Oh, my God, bro. You're, do you even like being on TikTok? Oh, yeah, I love TikTok. I don't watch much of it, but. Um, the debauchery on TikTok. Go on I, I do, I do. I mean, you know what I, you know what I watch now? What? Same thing with you do. That's why I watch your game and stuff. I watch gaming on, on social media, you know, right. um, I, I enjoy playing DMZ. I know you guys are against it, you know, I'm not against but, DMZ. They just not, they're not developing yeah, no more. DMZ is the business still. It's still hot. And I'm going to tell you something too. 
So I watch these content guys, right? And when, when they're doing DMZ, their views are crazy. They, they talk yeah. about it. And when they go in Warzone, it, it, it drops. You know, because the truth is, DMZ gives you more time to create content. Warzone, you just fun, go. It's more, go. Fun, it's more fun to watch, too. There's a lot going on oh, yeah. in DMZ. You better it's be about the business. Story. It's a true story of what's going on. You can get caught in the pinch. You, I'm I'm with it. I'm not against it. We'll we'll work on it because you know I'm I'm I plan on messing. I don't know if you seen my new videos I just dropped yesterday, but I'm working on a method with my gaming and trying to find a process. It's just it's more. You play on a computer, right? Hmm. You play on a computer? Yeah, I'm on PC. Yeah, my son is on on the on on the computer. Yeah, dang. Look, I am never. Look, I'm I'm good with my Xbox, right? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm. You're never gonna hear me say, "Hey, man, I'm better than you if they have a computer." Oh and no! I still son, use the Xbox controller. No, no, no. Yeah, but he he does everything: keyboard, mouse. No, like, I didn't do that. As fast as he moves on that computer playing COD, I can't even stay up with that. And my first like, my like, first system was crazy. a regular. My first system was a regular Nintendo in 1991. Man, I'm a controller guy till I die. I don't do the game. I don't do that. That's what I came up on in '64, Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis. Like I, I'm a controller guy. I can't I can't get the concept of the of the i just don't like it I, I prefer to have a controller in my hand because you're old school yeah i, I want to feel the joystick i want to do that yeah. and it's rest like this shit son, is hard bro yeah like my shit one day come over here and watch him play this shit you'll, you'll be blown away how he does that stuff bro like and he kills teams and teams and teams man i mean on, on dmz guys crazy some, some people are super good at it but i do have to i'm gonna take i'm gonna text you on the instagram um i gotta watch I'm not gonna put him out here on this channel, but watch <laughs> that dude. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. Let let, let <laughs> me know. But I do I do have to get out of here because I got an old lady that just got off work and I gotta attend to her. But Alrighty. we're gonna work some stuff out. I'm gonna send you some uh, reaction videos there, um uh SoCal and get your responses together. Sounds good. Don't do drugs, man. Be happy. Special thanks to Corey Wilson. Just signed up for the Patreon. He will get be able to message me directly. He also will be able to see videos before they come out. Weeks, sometimes months before they come out. Also, we're at TB Uncut. We're almost up to 500 followers over there. On Rumble, you get 100% of the notifications. So if you don't know what Rumble.com is, that's where all the people are going for freedom of speech, where you cannot be blackballed for your beliefs and what you think and what you say. So make sure you sign up for that. Sometimes on YouTube, they don't really, you know, they don't really pay attention to the notification. You say, I missed the live. If you're tired of missing lives, go sign up for rumble.com. It's TB Uncut. And if you want to help support the channel for more than just cash apps, you can hit the Patreon channel. And that Patreon channel, you get stuff first, you can message me directly, and you also can help support the channel. I appreciate everybody who signed up for the Patreon and the TB Uncut. I'm happy that you're here for the live. Let's get into it.